I'm Sam. I'm from Labour Outlook, um, and today I'm joined by Lewis Dagnall. Um, Lewis is running to be Labour's candidate in the South Yorkshire mayoral election, and um, he's uh, attracted a lot of attention on social media with some eye-catching policies, um, such as uh, taking the buses back into public ownership and creating new forms of um, green finance to fund a Green New Deal in South Yorkshire. He's been supported by unions such as Unite, GMB, Aslef and the TSSA and by prominent MPs like John McDonnell and Rebecca Long-Bailey and also by municipal list leaders like Jamie O'Driscoll and also Matt Brown in Preston who's led the way on community wealth building models um, as well as Labour for Green New Deal and organisations like Momentum. Um, thanks so much for joining me today Lewis. Um, I'm delighted to join you. Excellent, awesome. Um, well, first question, I guess, why is this election important and uh, what powers does the mayor have? Why should we care about this? <laughs> OK, well, there's two reasons and they feed into each other. The first is, is that Labour is only in government in the devolved administrations in, in Wales and in the, in the metro mayors across England. And it gives us an opportunity to show people what a difference socialism in practice means and what Labour can deliver for people. Um, we've seen in Wales, for example, how the support of the Welsh government for the Welsh people throughout the pandemic has, has resulted in a massive increase of support for Welsh Labour. And I think that the second reason then comes back to the fact that in South Yorkshire, we lost three seats to the Tories in the last general election. And so the only route to winning back power in Westminster involves us winning back support in Penison, Stocksbridge, Robber Valley and Don Valley. And so I think that they, that need to show Labour in devolved administrations making a real difference to people's lives is particularly acute for us in South Yorkshire. And that's why I've outlined a manifesto aimed at getting South Yorkshire moving that will win back a wide coalition of support in South Yorkshire for a Labour agenda. Absolutely. Um, that's yeah, great answer. Um, what then do you think are the sort of key issues that people are facing in the region and um, what are you seeking to do with your mayoral campaign to sort of address them? And, and why are you the candidate, do you think, to do that? Well, the number one issue that you'll hear in every corner of our region is people sick to the back teeth on public transport. Um, because we, and it's particularly painful because there's this memory that we once had the best public transport network in the country, mm. in South Yorkshire. You know, it was, it was so good that Thatcher had to abolish it um, <laughs> to stop it being an example of what you know, strong Labour um, in local government can do. And so you cross South Yorkshire, you meet people who can't get to work, can't get to school or university, can't get to hospital appointments or GP appointments because they're let down by privatised public transport operators. And so that is my, my core offer to people that I want to take into the election. I want May's election to be a referendum on ending privatisation and re-establishing a public bus and tram company. So that's a, quite a specific policy, but it actually, the analysis behind it can be applied right across South Yorkshire's economy, which that since deindustrialisation, we've had an extractive model of capitalism where we've had in, so-called inward investment welcomed. Well, what inward investment means is an outward flow of profit. And so this community wealth building agenda is a real shift in the economic model for South Yorkshire, where instead of welcoming anybody in, as long as, you know, they create low paid jobs and they, and they whack up some factories um, on the edges of um, our towns and cities and villages, we're instead going to be looking to invest in locally owned, preferably cooperative or employee owned businesses that are involved in the Green New Deal and the Green Industrial Revolution. And so... The buses, as an example of an extractive outside companies with Stagecoach, you know, infamously with Brian Souter, are just the start of the sort of economic transformation we want in South Yorkshire. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I remember uh, during the general election, doing kind of campaigning around Robber Valley, and I remember people, I don't have a car, I remember people with cars, took them literally like 10 minutes to take a journey that would take me about an hour and a half. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've kind of touched on this a bit already, um, in, in your kind of opening remarks. But obviously in 2019, we lost seats in Penison and Stocksbridge and in both Rother and Don Valleys. Um, how do you think that's affected your pitch to Labour members? And, and if you were selected, how would it sort of shape your election campaign? 
Well, I think the, the thing that's strongest is that I want to go into this election, you know, and fight for every vote. Because, you know, I don't think this can be said anywhere, but certainly in South Yorkshire, this is not somewhere that, where Labour can take our support for granted. And it's somewhere where we need to work to show people that we've got the ambition to take on the problems that they're facing and we've got the solutions to, to fix them. And if, I, I actually think that it's a such a warning sign in, in those seats that we lost, that if you can have Tory MPs representing, you know, High Green, Denneby, Maltby, ex pit villages, which are some of the poorest places in the United Kingdom, full stop, if you've got Tory MPs representing them, then the Tories can win in South Yorkshire as a whole. And so if we don't mobilise people and win people over to support us, it, you know, there's a real risk. And this isn't a 2019 problem because we saw in Hartlepool that Labour is still losing support in the so-called Red Wall if we can't make our case strong enough. So, I mean, it's something I, you know, I believed in anyway, which is that we should have, a, we should always campaign positively with, with, a, with ambitious and engaging policies. But I think the electoral reality of it is it's more important than ever in South Yorkshire. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so actually, yeah, OK, on those sort of engaging and uh, kind of positive uh, kind of policies, one of the sort of dividing lines in this election um, has been on this issue about whether we bring the buses into public ownership or we just um, franchise the services. What's the difference uh, between those approach and what approach do you favour? Um, and, and why is that? Well, look, there's, there is absolute recognition across the board in the UK that the, you know, the decisions around deregulation and then privatisation of our, of our transport have not worked. And, you know, funnily enough, it's, it's something, not even Thatcher, when, you know, thought it was sensible to privatise railways and, you know, she set up arm's length companies. It was John Major's chaotic government that has, has landed us with this mess. And the Tories know this. So, I mean, just, just in the last few days, uh, the Tory MP for Rother Valley in South Yorkshire has published his plan for public transport, which involves franchising and the mayor regulating uh, the private companies operating here. Because he, you know, he's, he's recognised that the market is broken, and so I don't think that Labour can go in to the mayoral election with a franchising as its limit of its ambition for two reasons. Firstly, because it's not different enough to the Tories, and the Tories can match us on that. Um, and we've seen how Tories like uh, Ben Hoochin in in uh, Tees Valley with his uh, municipalisation of the airport, or just Boris on a range of issues. Boris's Tory party is willing to um, use the state to prop up its interests and to win over voters when it needs to. And so if we just stick to franchising of the private companies, um, it's not enough to make us distinct from the Tories. But the other element of this is it's also not the right solution. Um, franchising is a halfway house. My dad's um, started work on British Rail and has worked on the railways all the way through privatisation. And they have a form of franchising with the Department of Transport setting out contracts that private companies then operate to and get paid a management fee to do. And um, he wouldn't, you know, his experience is that that doesn't, you know, that's still got the corruption of private profit seeking within a public service. And it doesn't allow you to fully deliver a public service like public ownership does. So when we saw in uh, when the East Coast mainline collapsed and, and the last Labour government brought that in, within a few years, that publicly owned company operating to a public sector ethos was actually returning money to the Exchequer. Because actually, when you stop a vicious circle of cuts, fair rises, declining passenger numbers and actually focus on providing a good service, people want to use it. So that's why I've put at the centre of my plans a publicly owned bus and tram company for South Yorkshire, because I think that allows you to have a, a logic of public service guiding the operation of our public transport system. 
and it provides a base for other policies. So I would want that company to be governed by a cooperative structure in which passenger nominated directors and worker nominated directors had a say in the key decisions of that company. And I would also want us to apply the community wealth building principles. So when that company was retrofitting its buses, it would use South Yorkshire companies like Magtech and Rotherham and therefore expand their capacity and reshape the market in South Yorkshire away from carbon and to a post-carbon future. Yeah, and that's really kind of a, a great segue actually onto what my next, next question was going to be, um, which was that kind of issue. Um, so you talked a bit about kind of democratising public services with um, kind of that cooperative structure. Um, but those that issue of kind of community wealth building and a Green New Deal too, what do those kind of two terms mean to you? Because they're bandied around quite quite a lot, I think, actually in this. Um, I think, I think um, most of the candidates have used the term community wealth building and a Green New Deal. So what do those terms mean to you specifically? Um, and, and what does that look like? What does a Green New Deal look like in South Yorkshire? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a mark of great success of those who have been campaigning for Labour to adopt these ideas, community wealth building and the Green New Deal, that they're now quite widely used. But what I think we need is, is a deep understanding of, uh, of this. And like I say, it's the community wealth building is, is built into my entire plan. I want a publicly owned bus and tram company so it can invest in local procurement. Um, I want the mayor's business support to be focused on companies that recognise trade unions, pay a real living wage, pay their taxes in South Yorkshire. And so that's how we can get the economic shift I've talked about from an extractive model to a, a model where our wealth intensifies over time in South Yorkshire. Because we are a particularly impoverished region. After deindustrialization, we were one of the poorest places in Europe. And that was covered up a bit with the new Labour government's investment in public services. But when the Tories cut those public services, in the 2010s, South Yorkshire again returned to being one of the poorest places in Northern Europe. And so clearly, it, you know, we need to do something to strengthen our economy. And I think that the Green New Deal approach of the public sector taking the lead in a transition to net zero, that means that workers are not left behind, is crucial. Mm -hmm. And it's crucial because if you go across South Yorkshire and if you say, we need to cut carbon intensive industries, people will remember the experience of the 80s and 90s and of people going onto the dole from the steel industry or from the coal industry and not having any alternative. And that is absolutely, you know, it's for, for many reasons. From a social impact, that's not what we want. But also if that's how people perceive the transition to net zero, we're never going to win political support for it. So the point of the Green New Deal is saying that we're not going to put gas fitters out of work. We're going to retrain gas fitters to work in hydrogen or renewables. Um, and actually that allows South Yorkshire to reclaim its place as a world leader in energy and manufacturing like it was before. Only this time with renewable energy and clean technology rather than fossil fuels. Yeah, absolutely. See, so, yeah, I guess, you know, I, I mean, I've heard like kind of some of the criticisms of sort of new labour in that respect being that actually there were, while there was a sort of investment in public services, there was no sort of restructuring of the way the economy worked. So although there was this redistribution of wealth, there wasn't necessarily, even, even though inequality grew, there wasn't necessarily a kind of a change in the sort of fundamentals of the way the system worked. And I guess that's what yeah. you're kind of proposing in this sort of situation, which is well, like really exciting. There was too much acceptance of this yeah. idea that there is no alternative yeah. to a neoliberal globalisation and to a generation that's grown up um, like mine after the 2007 financial crash. The idea that there is no alternative is just rubbish. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, you know, there is an alternative. And, and even, you know, even now, I imagine people's expectations are more radical after the experience of the pandemic, where we've seen the Tories completely doing about turn on debt, public spending um, and, in, and intervention in the economy. I think now when people, we see that climate change is rising in people's consciousness, but I think that's partly because they look at what, how the Tories responded to the pandemic and think, why can't we respond like that to the climate emergency? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it all sounds really exciting. Uh, <laughs> and how, how, do, how do people get involved in your campaign? If they want to go um, like hit the phones or whatever, how, people, how do people get involved in your campaign? Because it sounds like something um, that certainly we left should be back in. Yeah, well, this, I mean, this is a, this is a people-powered campaign. We've, we've, we've only achieved what we've achieved so far 
with people who like our ideas and want to put them into practice volunteering. So we've delivered a leaflet to virtually everybody in every Labour member in South Yorkshire by hand on foot. And uh, that's a testimony to how how fantastic the volunteers who have come forward. But there's a lot of work to do over the next week because we're now trying to speak to every <laughs> Labour member in South Yorkshire. And not just win the selection, but because the campaign that we build now needs to carry on building momentum up to the election and beyond. So we can carry on campaigning to get our message out about why this is such an important agenda once we win. So if people want to be part of um, building a Green New Deal in practice, rebuilding public services in practice with a publicly owned transport system, then this is definitely a campaign for people to get involved in. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, uh, Lewis. And uh, if you're watching, uh, make sure that you follow Labour Outlook on uh, social media, on Twitter and on, and on Facebook, and um, that you're, you're checking in regularly with the website uh, for more content like this. And thanks again, Lewis, for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.